Hello my dear students welcome back to my channel my name is prachi sharma and in today's session we'll be working on mole concept so this is another part of the series that is going on that is mind mapping series so uh, this is slightly different from a traditional mind map that we discuss so we have a chart made out and then we discuss the chart but in today's session we'll be working in a sequence that is we understand a topic we do a question based on that and uh so on the important portion important part for today's session is to understand what is in the syllabus what are the different topics in the syllabus and what are the different type of questions so we won't be going in to the details of lot of questions we'll be solving about four questions and to help you practice questions there is a separate video that is important questions of mole concept you have two parts of that one is already out and another one would be soon out so to practice the questions you can go to that video and practice the questions or you may download the pdf file from the description box you can also find the file on uh, on telegram channel and download it from there so whatever works for you you can take a look at those questions for practice so to for today's session let's get started all right students so let's get started with today's session so let's start with the basic understanding of gay lussac's law so you only have basic 3 to 4 topics in the syllabus so let's get started with the first one so in this one if you see the definition is written out so what does the definition say you need to know the definitions for all of them so let's get started with this so gay lussac's law say that when gases react they do so in volumes so of course they would react in volumes you will put one volume of let's say oxygen reacting with one volume of oxygen so equal amounts are reacting together so hydrogen plus oxygen will give you water vapors so this is a ratio that we talk about that means how much oxygen you are using how much hydrogen you are using and how much water vapor you are getting at the end so this is this works in the ratio of volumes so let's see when gases react they do so in volumes which bears a simple whole number ratio so you will always have a whole number ratio it won't be in fractions it won't be like 2 by 3 of oxygen is used it won't be like that you will have a whole number ratio to one another and to volumes of the product if gaseous so in this particular law the statement that you need to remember important is the condition that is provided that the temperature and pressure remains constant that it is not changing so let's look at the example so if you see um i have let me just change the color here okay so i have hydrogen plus oxygen giving me water vapor and when i balance the equation we realize the ratio is there so that means 2 is to 1 that means two volumes of hydrogen is being combined with one volume of oxygen to give you two volumes of water vapor so this is how your ratios work so once you balance it these numbers that is your 2 1 and this 2 is also known as stoichiometric coefficients so if you talk about the the ratio in the entire equation you are working on the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 2 okay let's look at another example that is nitrogen plus hydrogen giving you ammonia that means 1 is to 3 is to 2 okay so this is what what gay lussac say so let's read the de uh, definition again when gases react they do so in volumes which bears a simple whole number ratio to one another and to the to the volume of the product if gaseous okay so this is the statement it is important to mention the condition with it in the answer that you write that is provided that the temperature and pressure remains constant now let's get started with a question so this question says what volume of oxygen would be required for the complete combustion of 100 liters of ethane according to the following equation okay so now equation is given to you i always suggest you start with the equation so write the equation so equation is written okay once you have that write the ratios that you have so you have 2 is to 7 is to 4 is to 6 this is your ratio now we'll come back to the question they are asking what volume of oxygen so that means you don't know oxygen so write a question mark below oxygen 
would be required for the complete combustion of 100 liters of ethane so 100 liters of ethane is given okay so 100 liters of ethane is given and oxygen you have to find out so let's see so the question is saying that two volumes of ethane is giving me seven volume of oxygen that means one volume of ethane will give me seven by two volume of oxygen correct and they have given hundred liters of ethane so that means hundred liters of ethane will give me seven by two times hundred volume or liters of oxygen so you can simply solve it this becomes 350 so 350 liters of oxygen is utilized by ethane okay by 100 liters of ethane uh, 350 liters of oxygen is required to burn it okay now let's move ahead uh, forward so next we have vapor density so what is vapor density so vapor density is a ratio that you get that means when you're comparing the gases it's a ratio of a gas that is given to you the mass of volume of gas the whatever gas you are working with divided by mass of v that means mass of volume of hydrogen or air so it could be hydrogen or air depends on what is given in the question so whatever vol whatever gas you are working with mass of that divided by mass of volume of hydrogen or air now let's look at the definition definition says that it is the density of a gas expressed as the mass of a given volume of the gas divided by the mass of an equal volume of a reference gas now reference gas gas could be anything it could be hydrogen it could be air it could be something given in the question at the same temperature and pressure then we look at the formula so the formula is vapor density equals mass of v volume gas volume of gas divided by of hydrogen this is one formula another one is where your vapor velocity equal vapor density equals rmm that is relative molecular mass okay so one is direct mass you can calculate with that another one is relative molecular mass so relative molecular mass of the gas that you're looking for divided by a reference gas which could be hydrogen air or anything else another formula is molecular mass equals two times vapor density okay so i hope this much is clear all of these formulas are important now let's look at this question a gas cylinder of capacity 20 dm cube that is decimeter cube is filled with the gas x the mass of which is 10 grams okay so the gas they have given us is x when the same cylinder is filled with hydrogen gas so second gas your reference gas is hydrogen okay so let's uh, let's start writing it so we know that vapor density equals mass of x gas divided by mass of hydrogen so uh, they have given a gas cylinder of capacity the total capacity is 20 is filled with x gas x gas is how much it is 10 divided by hydrogen gas at the same temperature and pressure the mass of hydrogen is 2 grams so divided by 2 grams this gives you the vapor density which is 5 hence the relative molecular relative mass of the gas okay so they are looking for the relative mass of the gas you found out the vapor density from the first formula now if you look at the second formula that is vd vapor density equals relative molecular mass of gas divided by relative molecular mass of hydrogen so let's look at that so your vapor density equals relative molecular mass of gas divided by relative molecular okay instead of using this one we can use the third formula that is molecular mass equals two times vapor density so we can directly use that relative molecular mass equals two times vapor density vapor density we found out it's five so two times five is ten so your relative molecular mass is ten okay so you can mark that that is b okay let's move ahead to the next question next part that is empirical formula now what is empirical formula any formula that is given to you the simplest form of that formula for example let's say you have h2o2 okay two of h's two of o's now when you cancel it out or you can take two common you are left with ho so this is a very vague example but you are left with ho 
so that too you gave you brought it common so ho is an empirical formula and h2o2 is a molecular formula so they both are similar it is just that when you take out common and there is no other common whole number coming out that gives you an empirical formula so an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound so let's look at the examples you have c2h6 now in this case you can take out common so you can take out two common once you take out two common you are left with ch3 or i can go reverse that means if you take a look at ch2 and you multiply the whole thing by 4 so you'll have c4h8 that is what you have again if you move ahead to the next one what is a common number in the in the numbers that are given here you have 6 12 and 6 you can take out 6 so if you take out 6 you are left with ch2 okay so this is what is a comparison between a molecular formula and empirical formula let's move ahead molecular formula equals n times empirical formula this n is what i was talking about you are taking it out common okay so either you can write it n uh, into empirical formula or you can also write uh, write it as empirical formula and whole and n is right here in the bottom this is also a correct way to write it it depends upon you what what works for you now and to find n how do we find n so n is relative molecular mass divided by empirical formula weight okay so you have the empirical formula you use that to find the weight another formula is rmm is also equal to 2 times vapor density so if vapor density is given in the question even then you can find out n so n will be 2 into vapor density divided by empirical formula weight okay now let's try try a question calculate the molecular formula of a compound whose empirical formula is ch2o and vapor density is 30 so you have the vapor density given in as 30 and then they have given you the empirical formula that is ch2o so you have ch2o so first thing you should do is find the weight for it so how will you find the weight so you will have 12 plus h is 2 plus of for oxygen it is 16 so 16 so this is 2 times 1 so don't get confused 2 times 1 plus 16 so if you combine that you end up with 30 now they are asking you to calculate the molecular formula so that is easy so what you are what you need to do is you just need to find the molecular formula now which formula will you use here so you will simply use this one n equals this one you will simply use n equals 2 times vapor density divided by empirical formula weight so 2 into 30 is the vapor vapor density divided by empirical formula weight you got 30 so what do you have you have this and this cancels out you have n equals 2 now you can use this 2 and find the molecular formula so now molecular formula we know that it is empirical formula whole thing multiplied by 2 we just got the 2 so the empirical formula given to you is ch2o so ch2o the whole thing multiplied by 2 you get c2h4o2 and this is your molecular formula okay students i hope that makes sense let's move ahead to the next one an organic compound of analysis on analysis gave hydrogen is this much oxygen is this much determine its empirical formula if the compound contains 12 atoms of carbon So let's look at this question. So whenever you have the percentage questions, you are always supposed to make a chart. What are you supposed to do in this chart? In this chart, you are supposed to write the compounds, their percentages, their atomic mass, and then there you are supposed to calculate a simple ratio. That means how many number in whole numbers you are supposed to have, how many number of atoms each one each element will have. So let's look at that. So I will start making it first. So the first thing you'll have is you'll have the element. Then uh, after the element, you'll have atomic mass. Atomic masses are already given right here. Then after that, you'll have composition. After composition, you'll have atomic ratio. Then you'll have simple ratio, and that's it. So let's. This is your chart. Okay, so we are starting with the elements. We have element as hydrogen, which is given 
Now the atomic mass is one. The composition given is six point four eight percent. So I'll just write six point eight, six point four eight. Then I have oxygen, which is sixteen. Then I have carbon, which is twelve. Let's look at compositions. So my um, oxygen is given fifty one point four two. So you can add them and my subtract it from hundred. Okay. So let's quickly do that. Okay, so you end up with forty two point one zero. Okay, so that is your composition for carbon. Now let's look at atomic ratio. For atomic ratio, what is supposed to do is suppose just div just divide this and this. So six point four eight divided by one, you end up with six point four eight. Then you have fifty one point four two divided by sixteen. So fifty one point four two divided by sixteen, you end up with three point two one. Then you have forty two point one zero divided by twelve. You end up with so forty two point one zero divided by twelve. You end up with three point five one. You end up with three point five one. Now for simple ratio, what you are supposed to do? You got these three ratios, right? Whichever is the smallest one, divide all of them with that number. So in this one, your three point two one is the smallest one. So we'll divide each number by three point two one. So six point four eight divided by three point two one, three point two one divided by three point two one, and three point five one divided by three point two one. So let's quickly look at the ratios. You get a two, you get a one, and for this you'll get one point one. So for one point one you can directly take it as one because it's a very slight difference. So that's it. So your first formula that you will get is empirical formula. You'll get Two H's, so H two O and C. You can also write it as C H two O. You can also write it like this. Now there is a catch in this question. The question says the compound contains twelve atoms of carbon. Okay, so if you come here and you figure out that your carbon and oxygen have the same numbers and hydrogen is double of it, so that means if my number of carbons is twelve. My hydrogen would be double of that; it would be twenty-four, and my oxygen will be same as carbon. That will be twelve. So your final answer, that is final empirical formula. What is the question asking? Determine the empirical formula. Yeah. So the final empirical formula is C twelve H twenty-four O twelve. Okay. So that will be the answer for this particular question. So my dear students, this is it for today's session. I have tried to make sure that I have covered the three to four important portions of mole concept, and I have tried to show you the different type of questions that may come around the same topic. So please make sure that you practice these questions from the important questions of mole concept. I have covered about fifteen, sixteen questions in one video, and the next one would be out very soon. So you have ample number of questions to practice out. For any doubts and queries, you can reach out to me in the comment box below. or on the telegram channel or you can also write me an email on psclassesicse@gmail.com thank you so much students keep working hard your boards are just around the corner make sure that you are practicing enough questions and learning everything required thank you so much i hope you have a wonderful day